Hey, everyone who loves physics and conducting physical experiments, I'm Alexei Kolchin, and in this video, we're going to discuss an incredible toy called the Chinese Wolfie. And this is how it's done. This is a ball with a cylindrical hollow on one side, and a wooden rod rounded at the end is inserted into this hollow. Until the top is screwed on, it behaves like a fickle vanka. If you push him aside, he quickly bounces back to his original position, lowering his center of gravity. When placed on a pole, it will inevitably fall to the ground due to the force of gravity acting upon it. However, when you give the top a vigorous spin, it defies expectations by suddenly standing upright on the peg and then firmly stabilizing itself in that position. In accordance with the English saying, he dozed off like a log. And when viewed in fast motion, this transformation from rotating on the side to rotating on the feet can be observed in the following manner. And it occurs in just a few quick rotations. And now astonishingly, the spinning top is almost magically standing upright in a perfectly vertical position. And as it usually happens with rotational motion, the behavior of the Chinese top, which Alexei just demonstrated to us, turned out to be quite difficult to explain. William Thompson, also known as Lord Kelvin, had a connection with them. This is why the spinning top is sometimes referred to as the Thompson spinning top. In this photo, you can see Wolfgang Pauli and Niels Bohr, the renowned pioneers of quantum mechanics. They leaned over the Chinese yo-yo, pondering its peculiar and unexpected behavior with curiosity. Due to the limited size of our toy, we are unable to consistently demonstrate its functionality. To address this issue, we have constructed a wooden model that will allow us to showcase two crucial moments for better understanding purposes. When I position it on the heavier bottom part and secure it in place, the rotation becomes unstable, leading to potential instability. When our spinning top flips over, I can prevent it from falling by screwing it down with a small rod. Once secured, the top will balance on the rod and spin with great stability, maintaining a steady motion that captivates our attention and brings joy to our faces. And all this, of course, serves as a reminder of a regular Eula, which stands spinning on its leg and doesn't fall down. And now I will grab our beloved spinner, place it on a high leg, spin it up, and then we will briefly discuss its behavior. I am going to grab the drill from the toolbox. It's essential for the task at hand. I will be careful while handling it to avoid any accidents or injuries. Safety is always a top priority. The spinning top is supported by a single leg and rotates swiftly, while its axis undergoes gradual rotational movements, which are commonly referred to as precession. If you wait a bit, the tilt of the axis will increase and the precession will accelerate. And in order to understand why the spinning top doesn't tip over and keep spinning, we'll need to recall the basic laws of rotational motion. In this illustration, I depicted a spinning top. When viewed from above, the top rotates in a counterclockwise direction. According to Buravchik's rules, the angular momentum vector L is directed upwards along the doctor's axis as specified by established guidelines for motion. Now let's see what forces are acting on the spinning top. This is the force of gravity. It is applied to the center of gravity and the support reactions N are equal in magnitude but do not lie on the same line and therefore they create a moment of force which again, according to the rules of Buravchik, is directed towards you, so to speak, into the board. And I will use this small cross to symbolize the moment of momentum in this particular instance. Well, now we need to refer to the main equation of rotational motion, dl, change in angular momentum, over dt there is m, moment of force. And here comes the moment of power, its vector is perpendicular to the vector of momentum. Thus, the angular momentum vector remains constant and does not alter its magnitude. However, on the flip side, it alters its direction and it transpires that l rotates in this manner along the cone. This is what we witnessed during our experiment. We have examined the spinning top with a stationary bottom pivot point, and now I will conduct another experiment with you. In order to accommodate his needs, I will opt for a transparent ball that weighs 40 grams. To slightly adjust the ball's center of gravity, I will attach a small weight, weighing only 2 grams, to the ball. This weight will be positioned slightly off-center, 
ensuring a subtle shift in the ball's balance. And now we'll observe the spinning motion of the ball when it is rotated with the weight positioned downwards. The ball started moving and we saw the weight quickly rise from its lower position. He keeps climbing higher and higher and there he is at the top. Rotation with the center of gravity at the bottom is unstable while at the top it is stable. Yes, as long as the ball maintains enough rotational speed. Furthermore, if we investigate why a ball with a shifted center of gravity becomes unstable when its center of gravity is at the bottom, we can also comprehend the Chinese spinning top. The Chinese spinning top also has its center of gravity shifted downward in relation to the ball's center. In uncovering these principles, we deepen our understanding of spinning objects and their stability. And now I am back to provide a detailed explanation for everything that can be explained. To accomplish this, we will carefully study the interaction between the table and our Chinese spinning top model. By utilizing a high-speed camera, we can accurately document the spinning top's intricate movements for precise analysis and observation. And we see that this point of contact of the wheel with the table describes a circle. So it's clear that the center of mass of the spinning top is located above the center of this circle since no horizontal forces are acting on the top. So, at any given time, the little wolf has two fixed points, a point of contact and a center of mass, and an instantaneous axis of rotation passes through these points. And even though we've now spun the top, we won't be able to perfectly align its axis vertically. It will be deviated from the vertical, and here this deviation is exaggerated. We are aware that when the wolf comes into contact with the table, it will move in a way that forms a specific circular pattern on its surface. The axis of rotation passes through the contact point and center of gravity of the top. And at the same time, the angular momentum vector will be even more deviated from the vertical axis because the moments of inertia of the spinning top do not coincide with the principal axes. The moment of inertia about the axis of the spinning top is the smallest. Now let's discuss the forces on the spinning top. The force of gravity and the force of support reactions aren't even depicted here because they can't knock over the spinning top. As we already figured out, talking about a regular yo-yo, they only provide the process of the momentum vector and the yo-yo itself. What type of force generates the tipping moment? The only thing remaining is the force of friction. If we bear in mind that the lower point, where the spinning top makes contact with the table, traces a circular path, it signifies that when the top speed is directed towards us, the friction force acts perpendicular to the plane of the board, originating from our side. This friction force creates a moment relative to the center of gravity, which is directed in the same direction in accordance with Burovchik's rule. And this moment, according to the main equation of rotational motion, will tip over the angular momentum vector and further deflect it in that direction. Well, and accordingly, the instantaneous rotation. Simultaneously, the upper part of the spinning toy will veer in the opposite direction and it will continue to lose momentum until it makes contact with the table. Do not assume that we are fabricating stories on the spot, because Alexei and I often dedicate hours to sitting with our papers, trying to understand this phenomenon for ourselves. The phenomenon involving the spinning top has turned out to be really complicated and requires thorough examination. However, despite this, there appears to be a single point in his recent statement that requires comprehension. At this particular juncture, it is the specific function of friction and the fundamental concept of complete adhesion between the wheel and the surface. In order to play around with it and see what happens, I decided to place an upside-down lid on top of it. There's a spinning top on the glass, and if you give it a spin, it stands up on its own, just like you see. And if I insert a ball, I screw it in tightly and carefully observe the outcome to see how it behaves. I insert the screw and carefully monitor as the weight, originally located at the bottom, gradually moves upward in response. Everything exactly as it was in the experiment conducted on the table that is completely flat. I will now position a rubber sheet here and take great care in smoothing it out, ensuring there are no bubbles. It is vital that I meticulously remove any air pockets or imperfections, leaving behind a perfectly smooth and flat surface. 
and I'll try to spin the top here. He does manage to get up on his tiny foot. Doesn't have a long lifespan. Now, as for the ball, it's similar to me in terms of longevity. I did not try to promote him. It is not my thing. So in order for the cargo to ultimately and successfully end up on top, and it's rather peculiar, as it appears that the rubber actually brings about a significant change. Indeed, the frictional force is the pivotal factor that plays a crucial role in solving this particular problem. In the high-speed video footage, it is evident that the load has experienced a significant rise of around 90 degrees. This indicates that the lower position of the cargo continues to be in an unstable state. However, he is unable to make any further progress. The rubber material significantly altered the grip, leading to an unexpected change in the final result. And I gotta say, this shit turned out to be insanely difficult, way more complicated than we thought. And when we look into articles about the Chinese IP scientists and mechanics, the pages are filled with formulas. In the end, we still have to resort to numerical modeling. And to come to some kind of explanation, so to speak, in simple terms, it seems like no one has been able to do it. It is fortunate that we already comprehend why this initial rotation is unstable and leads to flipping over, which is a positive thing. Now I'll try explaining the stability of the spinning top in the upright position. Although on occasion we ourselves feel as if our explanations are improvised, so to speak, in the moment. We know that this situation is stable and we're just fabricating something. Nevertheless, regardless still, let the spinning top stand on its little leg and let it tilt just a little bit. We have to explain to him the technique that helps him regain a vertical position. And now Volchok is spinning rapidly in a circular motion around his own axis. The axis, which coincides with the leg, huh? At the bottom point where the touch occurs. Table spins. Movement is not possible without slipping. There is a lack of complete connection between the two entities at this point. The top spins rapidly, and although this point of contact is in precessional motion, it moves away from us. However, due to the spinning, the material of the top comes towards us here, bringing the point of the top closer to us, resulting in a fascinating visual effect. And since she's coming at us, that's where the power comes in. Now it is sliding friction, not the force of friction. Rolling like in that previous explanation, you know. This message is from us. That is all we have, folks. According to the same rule as Baravchik, this friction force creates a moment relative to the center of gravity. We must demonstrate it here pointing in this direction. It's crucial to observe that, based on the rotation equation, our L will undergo a modification and eventually straighten out. And once again, Andre flawlessly explained everything. I mean, he not only did a jump, but also executed a remarkable somersault, perfectly exemplifying the concept of frictional force. In earlier times, friction was thought of as rolling friction, but in the updated model, it is now understood and described as sliding friction. However, I have to admit, all those Chinese yo-yo researchers were really struggling to figure out the exact friction force that acts on the yo-yo. And we also conducted various experiments, including deciding to reduce friction. So they took this mirror and we spun the spinning top on the surface, fascinated by its twirling patterns. The toy brought us joy as it spun, adding a delightful touch to our day. And he does not rise from his position. See how he spins so beautifully? Take a look. He's spinning round and round without any end in sight. It seems like he'll keep spinning indefinitely, never stopping or slowing down. And Alexei was so blown away by what he saw that he lost his ability to speak and didn't know what to say. Due to our failure to rehearse the experiment prior, we were unable to produce any results or achieve any desired outcomes. At this moment, I will try to reproduce exactly what he demonstrated earlier, as he showed me. Taking the same spinning top, the same mirror. Finally, the spinning top stood on its leg. Yeah, the experience turned out to be truly irreplaceable. To be honest, we initially had a completely different plan in mind from what actually unfolded. Take some baking soda and sprinkle it on the mirror. Then place a top on the soda and observe what happens next. You will be amazed by the reaction that follows. When you give him a soda, he surprisingly refuses to flip over and instead remains in that position, seemingly content. 
It's interesting how a simple beverage can alter his behavior. Well, we ourselves don't really understand what's going on, and we're reaching out to you. Perhaps someone has any ideas about what occurred here, and if you possess them, jot them down in the comments section of this YouTube video.